I was asked to talk about self-fulfilling prophecies, which I'm sure I talk about a lot, and I'm really sorry if it's repetitive. Um, what? Leave it alone. He's not happy. Say hi. That's my most reclusive cat. So he's not happy that he's before the camera. Anyway, um, so self-fulfilling prophecies, um, which I kind of have an issue with because they are unto themselves. They're always a negative connotation. And if you've got a positive self-fulfilling prophecy, then you're talking about like reading a book like The Secret, which is all about make yourself a vision board and focus on this positive things and it will they're talking to each other through the door again uh, and then it will suddenly appear for you and you'll get everything you always wanted um, that's not how they work with uh, people with avoidant personality disorder and it, it is again it's usually a negative thing like you set yourself up and now everything has gone to crap again um, and that's why I don't like the idea of it that it's a um, it's it's a really really easy thing for people to go to and they it's basically blame the victim all over again well it's your fault you had you know, self-fulfilling prophecy of course that failed um, now so that needs to have a, a definite distinction from uh, prepare for a cat that doesn't want anybody to know he exists. Anyway, um, that's very different from preparing for what could happen. Um, and uh, I'll do that a lot. I mean, I've been accused of it. Uh, I've got to forget these guys. They're they're scratching at the door. It's not even the side of the door that opened. Anyway, um, sorry. So, um, that's very different from preparing for, um, basically, let's see, what could be the analogy? Okay, in sports, for instance. Um, in sports, a lot of the athletes, if they have to do something, they sort of run it through their head ahead of time um, in order to prepare for what's going to happen and, and so that you know it, and a lot of them say well I knew I could do it because I had already seen it in my head so I knew it was going to be done and I knew it was it was gonna be fine and um, that's what a lot of avoidant people do like for instance you're going to go to a party and you might think okay well I need to you know talk to this person I'm, I'm go to a party it's not ridiculous that's what everybody always says but mm, then again this time of year maybe you are going to have to go to an office party a family party uh, something like that um, even you know a, a simple get together with coffee if you're already stressed out could be as as impactful as um, going to a full-blown party but anyway okay so you sort of think in your head about how it's going to work out um, and now what I do personally um, again I've been accused of catastrophizing and there's two ways to do that one is to think of the worst case scenario and just absolutely flip out oh, these cats are impressive because they're actually pushing the door to push I guess um, so if you basically completely overreact as if whatever the thought had happened in your head had happened if it you know so it hasn't happened yet but in your your head it, it happened definitely like you know you heard a siren so that means that you know one of the cats got hit by a car or something like that no they don't send an ambulance for a cat to get hit a cat gets hit by a car can't talk either anyway so that's ridiculous but that could happen that somebody could then completely overreact as if oh, 
this actually did happen, whatever the thought was in their head. Now, that's no good. Um, but what avoiding people do usually, I've heard this again and again and again, I definitely do it, um, is basically you think of all the possible scenarios, actually positive and negative, because in a lot of cases, a really positive interaction could be even more stressful than a really negative one. So basically you come up with all these different possible scenarios and sort of run through it ahead of time and think, could I handle that? Could I handle it if, who knows, my mother decided to start airing dirty laundry because she wanted to get some attention and get some laughs. Okay, if that happened, what would I do? That'd be a pretty bad worst case scenario. Um, you know, um, you know, maybe somebody would decide that they want to be friends with me. Oh um, some random person that they talked to me for three minutes at a party and suddenly they're joined at the hip. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Um, now, to pull that back to self-fulfilling prophecy, see, then what people do is there is never a self-fulfilling prophecy ahead of time. It's always after the fact that you're like, oh, that was self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, and well, guess what? Somebody that's avoidant, I mean, for me personally, I'll run through 20, 30 or more, depending on how much time I have, lead up time. Uh, of these scenarios in my head and yet yeah, one of them might actually happen that is not a self-fulfilling prophecy no uh, but a lot of people will pin that down and say well see you've got self-fulfilling prophecy you're always negative you will say blah 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 it's gonna happen and did yeah well they're ignoring the other things that you said were gonna happen and also uh, people with avoiding personality disorder are pretty good statisticians, let's put it that way. Um, because they play the odds, they know what happens. Um, I get told constantly that I think I am a fortune teller that I and that it's really horrible for me because I think that whatever's happened in the past is gonna dictate what's gonna happen in the future. Guess what? That actually happens a lot. And that is not a self-fulfilling prophecy if somebody is like, well, this person has treated me terribly for the last eight times I've seen them, and I think they're going to treat me terribly this time. Not a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, people might call you, let's call it that. Okay, what is a self-fulfilling prophecy is? This is a situation where it does sort of like apply, and we should try to weed this out of your life where if you say okay um, I'm really interested in going to a movie that's just come out let's say that happens. and you think okay you know what I, I'm really hyped to see this movie I'm really excited I've got good energy and good vibes and I want to and I'm going to prep myself ahead of time and I'm gonna go but you know what I bet I bet I'm going to freak out when I get there. And I bet I'm just not going to have the guts to go in and do it. And you talk yourself out of it. That is self-fulfilling prophecy. And if you're aware of it, then you can cut that back. Because again, you can say, okay, well, that is just one scenario. There could be 50 different things that could happen. Yeah, and a lot of them could be really wretchedly awful, but that might not be one of them. And you know what? Then the other thing to do is, um, actually, I talk about this to my son all the time, and he wants me to make a video about him. Um, specifically with anger, though. But it applies in this case, too. Do you care that cat? He doesn't want to be left out. Anyway, um, is that anger is a tool. It's shining a light on 
something that's happening that is unacceptable and needs to change. So blowing up when you're angry just doesn't do anything. Um, however, it definitely like points out this, this is it. This is the problem. Fix something about this. And when you start having these repetitive thoughts, now again, avoidant personality disorder, you get a thought in your head and it basically sticks, extra sticky neural pathways. And so, um, and the way to sort of mitigate that, I think there's nothing out there. I've never seen anything about this. It might just be a really awesome coincidence. Um, but I think the way to, to do it is to have many, many thoughts at once and then not one of them, even if there's one that's really obvious, like this, what's going to end up being will not stick because it's like people riding a bike over a muddy path, say. It's awful for me to make that, but seriously, you get, you know, if everybody follows the same path, then pretty soon there's going to be a pretty deep rut where th that those bike tires went. But if everybody goes, you know, a little to the right and a little to the left, uh, it'll stay basically even. And if, there won't be any really nasty ruts. And I think that's what happens with avoiding personality disorder. My gut says that's what happens. Because if you can keep a whole bunch of thoughts going, then it sort of jams the circuits. And then you can, you can not get stuck on one thing that you think is going to be, you know, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and you can think of multiple things and can sort of like help you get past the avoidance. So I just knocked this cat in the head. <laughs> They're crazy. Anyway, um, <laughs> he didn't get hurt. He thought he was petting him with my elbow. So anyway, um, yeah. So self-fulfilling prophecies, I think they're kind of crap because again, you can only really label them that after the fact. You can't go, okay, I'm going to do a self-fulfilling prophecy now. Watch this. And then go out and talk yourself out of something. I mean, if you're too conscious about it, if you're paying that close attention to it, then you can override it really easily or you can just straight up say okay you know i'm not going to put myself in a situation where i feel like a total schmuck where i try to do something and fail at it therefore i'm just i'm going to do it a different day or again you know the point i was making with the anger thing which i sort of dropped sorry is um you know say say you've got like some idea of this is the way it's going to be and it's going to be horrible and i'm not going to be able to do it change something you want to go see a movie Take an afternoon off and go to a matinee when there's only one person in the theater with you. Nobody says you have to go at the prescribed normal times. I mean, there's a reason why they show the movies over and over again. Change that. Change something. Change something so that it's impossible for you to exactly fulfill this self-fulfilling prophecy, uh, cat catastrophic uh, thinking this one thought, like, this is going to happen, you know, and so if you make it impossible for that to actually happen that way, and of course the way that avoid people usually do that is to avoid, but you can change something else, change something else, so that it's not impossible, and, uh, you know, go to a different movie theater, if, you know, if you're like me and you can't stand the idea that people are going to see you being weird and then keep that in the back of their head and judge you about it, drive an hour away. Watch a movie in a movie theater you've never been to in a town you've never been to in a place you're never going to go back in. The chances of you interacting with somebody there that you're going to see again, extremely slight. Do something like that and then, you know, it will help you to get past um, this self-fulfilling prophecy thing, but also to, um, you know, if that's what you want to do. And, and the other thing is, you know, if people tell you that's what you're doing, then just either ignore them or tell them straight up that they're totally wrong because, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and it's not fair to judge based on that.